Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one I'm going to show you how you can take your jungling to the next level to speed run your climb because guess what there's not a lot of time left in the season and you know in the process of my regular scouting and pro vods and whatnot I noticed the talent jungle main basically abusing the degenerate champion jungling style that it now has and climbing to master tier with an 80% win rate. I also was doing your regular canyon reviews as he preps for worlds and two things stood out very prominently with both of them. So the one thing that allowed the talent main to climb that quickly and the one thing that Canyon permanently uses in all his games are really easy for you to use yourselves and ultimately they are things that will allow you to be consistent in your game planning and performances as well as be crucial aspects of climbing in general and basically can make you look like a smurf every time you play which is obviously what you want to do yes? Of course it is. And remember, if you want all the best information in-game provided to you in one easy overlay, Mobilytics has you covered. The live companion is designed to help you before, during, and after each game. Once you get into the loading screen, you get to see the fellow teammates that will ride with you on this portion of your journey, will also allow you to import runes and builds for the statistical edge. Don't waste your time in the loading screen as the app will give you advice based on your team compositions to maximize your advantages, only to be followed up by receiving useful, and that's the keyword, insights while you're playing including ultimate spikes, item completions, and more. You can also track the gold performance so that you know which enemy to completely destroy. And now it also has jungle timers for those of you who do not press tab like LS. Post game shows you the MVP, useful stats, and summaries of what you have accomplished. So in order to directly support the channel as well as to have the most complete way to learn, improve, and climb, download the Mobilytics companion app with the link below. And now without further hesitation, let's begin. And you are watching the first clears of the Talon game that will serve as our first core example before we get into the Canyon game. And the word that you've been looking for as I introduce this video isn't anything sexy, you know, just being decisive. That doesn't really provide you much of an idea. Oh, of course we got you. Everyone must be decisive. Yes, but how are we decisive? How do we process new information and current information within the game state? And then, you know, actually using that to take control of games, take over and become the smooth like jungle you were always destined to be. But you cannot do that. And this is the bonus point if you do not mute the pings of your teammates ultimately it will be the best way for you to have huge improvement i even mute pings and replays have you noticed that on the gameplay channel i just don't like listening to them as other lanes try to ping the jungler what to do you are going to be redirected by teammates who have no clue how to jungle have no clue what you're thinking about you cannot focus on being decisive if you are constantly having your attention redirected to suboptimal decisions. And as you see the Grandmaster Kane execute on the blue and the grump, that's right, Kane one trick in Grandmaster just did that, which means other junglers in your elos will most likely be doing that as well. By muting those pings, you will not only have to develop your own awareness and increase it tenfold because no one else is going to be spoon feeding your information, you also get to avoid your teammates spam pinging you when you make these kinds of mistakes. As far as Talon goes, you can see he's finished his first full clear, he's heading to the crab, you know Kane started topside, you know he's pathing down, he's not on the crab, you see his death on the scoreboard go to one, you know he got executed. Make the decisive decision to go and steal that Grom before he respawns and gets back to the area. You can then also observe your bottom lane and see if there's anyone you can E over and destroy. Remember, you have Ignite. Now the Camille TPs in decisively, and that's the keyword, please pay attention to this stuff. And basically you end up dying because obviously taking the Grump and then diving the Syndra, this is a high risk maneuver, but with Talon with Assassin junglers, you're looking to snowball and early death really isn't an issue. It's only an issue, my friends, if you have no idea what to do afterwards and early death should not compromise your entire game. And that's why Smurf junglers always surprise people of lower ranks. Ever face a good old fashioned Smurf with a 90% win rate? They're just doing everything you think about, but way faster. They're doing everything you think about, except before you. And then they're doing things you don't think about while anticipating what you yourself want to do. So it just feels like you've been made naked. And the only naked champion I play is Volibear, and that's because I can destroy everyone at the same time. Also fur. I understand we want the crab, we don't want to die early, we feel like we're losing all tempo control, but if you can't imagine and decide immediately what you want to do next out of the gates, you will lose tempo control and you will lose to the enemy jungler just simply making the decisions that you now have to react to and follow. Talon was heading directly to the scuttle crab. Obviously, you want to go straight to the outermost objective while you know the enemy jungler isn't there. The cane decides to do a drive-by gank in the mid lane. Talon reacts immediately and enjoy some sweet revenge. Now what? Well, first of all, don't push that wave of touch. That wave is going to push back nicely into the Yone as much as possible. The Aurelia is going to be slightly compromised because of this, but most likely she will have some roam potential, which if you were paying attention to the early clears, she already did. For Talon, it means falling back to secure your Grump and your Wolves and maybe your second tier Raptors. Because of all the kills and stolen experience you've had, this should be a very early level six, which is huge for junglers, especially if you're looking to make this decisive move into playing like a smurf to play more aggressively, but with measured strategy. The Yone pushes the wave back into the Aurelia, maybe you're thinking she's gone back to base, but you have an early level six, which means if he pushes up, she's gonna try and abuse that trade, knowing she has the lead and try and kill him again. 
be present, be ready to gank and use your ultimate. It's early, it's before the cane and she dies. Now, if you're tracking the cane, you know that after that early shenanigans, he's gonna be sequencing down again. And because you ganked in the mid lane, he will be there for that 2v2 fight that they're doing way before you. If he isn't perhaps doing that, it doesn't matter. Straight from mid lane to bottom lane, you've gotta see that piece in your mind. Hey, look, what do I do next? Is it fall back to my camps? Never. What can I do before I reward myself with those cams? Well, let's shoot down to the bottom lane. Maybe we can try get some kills. If it's looking kind of int, pull back out, try push the wave a little bit. Kane is able to clean up your bottom lane, but unfortunately he ults you and you do damage to him. You have multiple stacks. That means you do damage over time. So even though he's deep inside you, your body deals with him like the virus that he is and he dies, which means you get a triumph frog and you get to go happily all the way to your Krugs. You finish the early ghost play because you're snowballing more than a Nunu and out of base again, you've just cleared your camp's bottom side, you've just been in that direction, you know Kane's going to be doing his red. Let's try and head to the river, let's try look for an invade, look for a gank. Unfortunately, there is a goon squad in the mid lane, so even though this was his goal out of base, once more it doesn't go as planned, but he knows immediately and decisively, right, I'm gonna fall back down to my blue side and try and gank top lane. Why? Well, because we know that the cane is gonna go down to the crab, we know he's gonna look to gank the bottom lane again, and he's most likely going to try and take a dragon, which means even though we're not denying him anything, we can at least make an equal and opposite play very, very quickly. Most low elo junglers or junglers against his talent as he was climbing would have decided, oh, I'm gonna do my blue side, maybe a counter jungle. They're not thinking directly and immediately about how to counter a situation that didn't go quite as planned. They retreat into their shell and then blame laners for dying while they do literally nothing else to counteract these measures. Kane is gonna take your red, you can take his raptors, sets floating in the mid lane for some strange reason. Let's hippity hop into the wall, show him why everyone should just be playing Talon jungle, no question. And then when Kane shows up into the lane to hold the wave, don't whiffle waffle this next thing. You see him out of position, you see him over committing, not understanding the power you currently hold. Go in, use your ignite, you have damage over time. Walk away as the explosion goes off behind you like Iron Man. Yet another kill. Those of us in those situations who don't know our champions and we're not decisive enough, don't go for that kill because you don't know if your champion can do it and you don't know how much Kane can actually stand. And as he was currently still base form, it's it's not a lot. Using your leads decisively, swiftly, and as soon as you see that window of opportunity is the definition of someone playing like a smurf and why they always feel to get super fed no matter what the game state. He will literally continue to make every decision exactly like this. He will get picks, he will rotate to fights, he will get dragons, he will get isolation kills. He will dive people, he will get mop up kills, and you will see as you're looking through these various highlights how his kill count just simply goes up and his teammates aren't exactly doing much of anything. It's really a true 1v9 smurf performance and this wasn't Master Tier. He ends up with 23 kills and even though the Kane seemingly made the right decisions, every time he presented a window of opportunity and opening for the talent to counter him, the talent did so thusly. Now obviously recognition of these windows, understanding of your mechanical champion, understanding of how far you can push those limits, that is an experience thing but at the same time that's why I tell you, that's why many people tell you for champion pool videos which I've made many of, pick something that's versatile, pick a few things you enjoy playing and then play them. Have your champion pool of three. If one gets nerfed or pushed out of the so far you can't really use them effectively, choose another and slide it in, which means you will have over time accumulated a champion pool that allows you to push the limits of your champion no matter what, no matter the matchup. But hopefully as you're watching this talent finish up this game, that he is not waffling at any particular stage. There's no hesitation. It's all decisive. He knows what he wants to do going out of base and he knows what he wants to do A, if things go well and B, if things don't go well. He has contingencies in place and he just reflexes to what the map presents him. As a quick highlight of how this can work in sort of your platinum and below Elo, I decided to queue up on a smurf and play some support with my friend who plays jungle. Look at the immediate decision making that we provide to the map. An early gank, early kill pressure bottom lane equals fresh crab control, which means we can then decide to go to the mid lane and gank that. Afterwards, we know that the cane started bottom side and his second tier raptor spawn will occur around that 4 minute 20 mark. The cane also shows exactly what he wants to do with his body language, which is something junglers in this elo always do. He took the top crab, he holds the mid lane wave. It's very, very obvious where he's going now. He's not going to reset, he's going to do his raptors. Invade it, kill him, enjoy the fruits of your labor, and then now you think, okay, great, excellent, this is brilliant, now I can go back to base, spend my gold, I'm a happy donkey. Have you noticed the bottom lane? They're pushing up, there's definitely no vision control, it was way too early after they died. Move on down, they pushed up way too far, disrespecting the roam, kill them once more. And now you've got a fed Rek'Sai, you've got a fed Zyra and a fed bottom lane, you can totally control the game from this. And this was all from decisive map reads based upon what was given to us by the enemy team. Obviously the Rek'Sai has to understand this as well, you as junglers, no matter what you elo, have to understand this as well. But the second thing I spoke about in the beginning of this video was something Canyon did and something he does very well. I mentioned this concept 
concept of hesitation, not hesitating in your decisions. Sometimes, as I talked about in the ganking video recently, it is important to actually have a bit of strategic hesitation. If you're spotted, if you want to wait for cooldowns, if you're waiting for a laner, it's okay to wait a second, a few seconds, and then make your move. However, if the enemy does not provide you opportunities, if the enemy is playing very well, or if you're playing a scaling jungler, you have to use the word patience. And now you're watching this replay of Canyon, and I'll briefly have the timeline activated at the beginning of the game so you can see where he gets most of his kills. It's the mid and the late game. He doesn't get a lot going early, so how on earth do you scale? How on earth do you end up with 71 kill participation, the most damage on Talia, and actually carrying the game if things aren't provided to you early? And while Canyon is known to do some crazy limit testing in solo queue, as he's preparing for worlds, he's showing a bit more of that core patience. He will look for opportunities, he will make the right moves, the right pathings, but as you can see from the footage unfolding on your screen, if something isn't available, he will back out. If Elena ints and it looks like a bad situation, he doesn't die with them. He knows his moment will come. He knows that if he simply clears, looks for ganks or looks for ganks, and then if there's nothing, rewards himself with cams, if he can sneak away an objective or two while the enemy jungler's making proactive plays, he is storing his energy for that qualifying lap. He knows when he has to push and get the maximum out of his champion, the maximum out of the game state, he will be able to do so. And yes, I just had the fiddle gameplay released last week, and no, I didn't really talk much about, you know, the actual mental state of how you approach it. That's why I'm making this video, because it's not necessarily a jungle theory thing. It's really forcing yourself to think deeply about what you want to do, not in one move, but two, three, four, five moves. That's what makes the talent player so great, and that's what makes Canyon one of the best in the world and the defending world champion. He's timing your camps. If you show bottom lane and make a mistake, you're losing the top side. If you decide to do dragon, he's doing herald. If he needs to wait to pounce, he will. If he can be aggressive and take over the game early, he will do that as well. Using decisiveness and patience as your mental state and mental weapons against the enemy jungler is what allows you to climb fast and be like a smurf. The reason you get hard stuck is because you stop doing these things. You stop thinking moves ahead. And instead of playing like this talent, again, the match history will be in the description. And instead of playing like Canyon and waiting for your moment, you force things. You die on crab, you make an overly aggressive move, you get frustrated that laners are dying while you're doing grub. Notice how that didn't happen in any of these games that I showed you. Notice that both these mental warfare strategies work whether you're an early game snowballing champion like the Talon, or you know, you can actually farm and scale with Talon as well, but it also works if you're an omnivore jungler that needs to scale like a Talia, like a Karthus, like a Fiddle. And yes, the power of the mind is why most of you don't climb, and especially at the end of the season, you feel this time pressure, all of a sudden, there's not a lot of time left, I need to win, every loss pulls me back, it's my teammates' fault they're inting. Look, you can have the game of your life and get 20 kills from the jungle, but if the top laner refuses to play the game and your ADC pushes down mid and dies to a Z over and over again for no reason, you will lose sometimes. But if you're patient, but if you're decisive, but if you keep your mental in the middle, you don't swing too much into arrogance and you don't swing too much into tilt, you will definitely have the ability to control most games and have the power to win at least 60% of your games as you go through the final climb. That means that while you might have like, you know, 10 to 20% of the games completely out of your control, and maybe there's a 10 to 20% game selection where, you know, it's in the balance, you could win it with a bit of luck, you might need one of your teammates to step up and help you 2v8, but that also might not happen and you're simply paired with a bunch of lizards. You will lose those games, but if you have total control and game winning moments out of 60% of your games, there's no reason why anyone can't climb as long as you identify that and recognize that. Stop blaming your teams, be decisive, be patient, and I guarantee you, you will climb swiftly like a smurf. Well, there you have it. A little bit of a gameplay example of how to do something, a little bit of a core overview of a mental state necessary to win the game, but also a bit of a mental pep talk that keeps you focused on the ultimate prize, which is a positive LP outcome that sends you on the road to salvation. And honestly, most of you need that more than the jungle theory, to be honest with you. You're fully capable, but your mind needs to be focused. Activate the Mamba mentality and all that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you were able to enjoy and learn something. Please do like, share, and comment if you did. Please do subscribe for more content coming very soon on this channel and the gameplay channel. Coaching links in the description below. Patreon links in the description below. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.